as we know, it's been a turbulent few weeks for the royal family. One man who knows them better than most is broadcaster and wordsmith Giles Brandreth, who's I Can't Stop Talking tour. <laughs> well, it's a one-off. He has a new show. It's at the Cadogan Hall. You're right. You've got the title almost right. My wife thought of the title. Yes. The show's called Giles Brandreth Can't Stop Talking. Giles Brandreth Can't <laughs> Stop Talking. Really? Your wife came up yeah, with it? My wife well, came up with it. Well, that speaks volumes. Now. And we, we, we did it last year all over the country. And it wasn't going to come to London. And then somebody said, you've got to do it in London. You live in London. Come on. So I'm doing it at the Cadogan Hall in Sloan Square in, on the 26th of April, now, which is great fun. Now, you are royally connected. Oh, well, let's, have, let's have a look at these. Yes, yeah, so... Um, they um, go back a long way. When you were a young man, you were born in 48, same year as, uh, as King Charles. As a teenager in the 60s, you became very good friends with the then 17-year-old Queen Camilla, which I, you fancied rotten, you say. He then went on to meet Queen Elizabeth when he was 20 and then later was given the privilege of a walk and talk with Her Majesty as she went about official duties. Then he became involved in the work of one of Prince Philip's favourite charities, becoming his official biographer and his very good friend over 40, for over 40 years. So, you know yes. in which you speak. I do. I was lucky enough to know the Duke of Edinburgh well because I worked for this charity called the Playing Fields Association. Ah. And he was... It was the first charity he took on when he became Duke of Edinburgh back in 1947, right. when he married the person who would become Elizabeth II. And I admired him hugely. He was a kind of role model for me. He went on, you know, to be 99 years of age, still going strong. Well, can we cut to the present? And, and, and don't, yes. just, don't just do a good PR job for them, because you're a good friend. <laughs> how are they... Ha, come on, speak it like it is. How are they managing? Because to the outside world, this looks like a classic case of a family in crisis. I don't think a family in crisis. Well, it, certainly, the king, who is my age, has got cancer and is dealing with it. Uh, of course, half the families in the country have this, and well done him coming out and saying this is what the problem is, we're dealing with it. But I have to say, I have seen Queen Camilla several times in recent months, mm -hmm. and she is... Uh, she's remarkable. She is... Well, she, she's a year older than me, so she is 76, going to be 77. She's just keeping going, keeping the show going. We had an event a couple of weeks ago on the 14th of February, a Valentine's Day event, oh. that the King was going to come to, celebrating Shakespeare. He loves Shakespeare, he loves language. It's one of the things that I, that I have in common with them, is that it's great to have a King and a Queen whose love for the arts is authentic, it's genuine, it's mm. real. Mm. And it was going to be a celebration, lots of actors. We had a dozen dames were there. Indeed, I, I gave um, the Queen one, it was Valentine's Day, heart-shaped his and hers jumpers um, <laughs> for them to take him. There, look, a dozen dames turned up. Judy Dench and all the other dames came and the Queen sat with them. And I, I organised for her to meet 17 Hamlets. Now, the King was going to come to that. Yeah. And he wasn't able to because he was having treatment. And I said, well, should we postpone it? And she, they said, no, the show goes on. And so she turned up mm -hmm. with other members of the royal family, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester and the, some of the younger ones. They all came. And it's business as usual. That's the way it goes. Now, it's challenging because the King is not available at the moment mm. and the Princess of Wales is not available well, at the moment. Well, it's sort of not business as usual because, obviously, William didn't come to the memorial service yesterday. He, he cancelled with minutes to spare. Now, you wouldn't tell us if you knew, but do you happen to know what the personal reasons no, were? No, I don't happen to know. You don't Because know. it was a family event, so it wasn't like a public duty was being neglected. That's a good point. That's so a good point. that would be, yeah. you know, the Queen and the rest of the royal Because you don't know why he wasn't I, I able don't to know why. I don't no. know why he turned up. Okay. Uh, he's in this for the long haul. If you actually think about... What I thought was so remarkable about the Duke of Edinburgh, and I know it's the past, but he was a role model, is that for 70 years he turned up on the right day, at the right time, in the right uniform, and never, never stepped out of turn. Uh, they were great role models, that older generation. And there was a... I hosted with Joanna Lumley a party for Queen Camilla's 75th birthday, and at it she sort of set out her stall, and she said, you know, my role model is the Duke of Edinburgh, and his idea was, you know, turn up, do the job, <laughs> say less, do more, get on with it. Mm. And that's essentially what they are doing, yeah. you uh, see, which is I, fantastic. I don't think they have any obligation to be more open about the information they release than they are. I don't get this argument that because they're high-profile or, or publicly funded, they have a duty to tell us because otherwise people are speculating. But you, in your biography of the Queen, gave more detail about what she was uh, experiencing and suffering before, and we're talking about Queen Elizabeth II here, mm. than anybody else had. 
You told us yeah. that she had, or yes. you had heard, yes. she had a Well, that's, I was, I was writing disease. a full biography of Elizabeth II. You know, it was supposed to be an intimate portrait, and it was. But I'm with you there. They are... I think they're, they're key to brand Britain. You know, they're the 19th largest country in the world. So we're not number one, as we might have been when Queen Victoria was queen. Our GDP is sixth or seventh in the world. And yet, when the late queen died, more heads of state, world leaders, turned up in the city of London that day than had ever been in one place at the same time in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that for? It wasn't for the UK. It was for the person of the queen. And I think we have, in King Charles and Queen Camilla, Two people who, yes, they're older people, but, my goodness, they exemplify duty still. Uh, they're clearly good people who mean well, mm -hmm. and it's very good for Brand Britain. I mean, one of the reasons I still know the Queen... You're, the story about us as teenagers is amusing, um, and it is true in the sense that I was visiting her grandparents. She was in the garden. I thought she was smoking woodbines in the bushes. <laughs> she insists I was smoking. She admits that. She says, they were not woodbines, Giles. Please, don't keep saying they were woodbines. But you fancied her on the spot. Well, I was 16, she was 17, and she was lovely. She, she is still lovely. But I now meet her, because, like, I knew the Duke of Edinburgh mm. through his charity, which is now called Fields in Trust. I know the Queen because I'm a trustee of the Queen's reading room, which encourages reading uh, for everybody, because it's good for you. In fact, we've got a a wonderful festival coming up at Hampton Court on the 8th of June, where we'll be celebrating the joy of reading. So the value of this, I think the value of the royal family is there they are yeah. for Brand Britain, and there they are as people who give away as much as I think is reasonable, but no more. It's fascinating talking to you. And when you come to the show... Which the is, hall, Giles yes. Brandreth can't stop talking... The point of the show is... On the 26th of April. I know we've got to go to the news now. Yeah, yeah, we have. The point, of the, show, the point of the show is that the audience can actually ask me to talk about them they like, so they can be like you. So oh, really? we actually do a uh, full two-hour show, and I don't stop talking. Ooh, it's been a problem wow. for me be since I've been Be careful of what you wish for. Yeah. Okay. If we had a referendum today on whether we should keep the royal family or not, what do you think the result would be? I think... The younger people are probably not very interested. Older people would all say yes, but I think overall it's good for the country. It's one of the things that makes us unique. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much indeed, Giles Brandreth.